Jack Riccardi. 9 till 1. News Talk 550, KTSA, and FM 1071. KTSA News Time, 10.07. It's Friday. You know what that means. It means Gang of Four. You know what else it means? It means Facebook Live Gang of Four. Right now, it's history in the making. It's like it's like the first day of television. <laughs> no, not really. Or school. We have to it's smile It's the first day of now. school. That's right. We're all wearing our new clothes. There was a seating chart, may I say. Our moms brushed our teeth. Yeah, this is the first time Gang of Four has ever had a seating chart. Crazy. But we're going to put them right to work on the big stories of the day and the week. And in addition to hearing it on the radio, you can see it at 550 KTSA on Facebook. Or if you follow us, it's in your news feed, Facebook Live right now. On Gang of Four, we welcome back Kathy Meyer, retired middle school teacher, former FBI agent. She's probably done some other things she's not allowed to tell us about. Welcome yeah, I'm just doing a little bit of real back. estate consulting. Oh, uh, are you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and... Uh, my gosh, that storm yesterday, traveling downtown wow. was an obstacle course. Oh, yeah, still there's a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah. A lot of, Still some people without power, there too. There were trees that I didn't know where trees existed, mm-hmm. but I know now because they're on the ground. Because they're on the ground, yeah. How are you doing? Doing great. Yeah. Well, welcome back to Gang of Thank Four. Thank you. Um, everybody's a little awkward now, but we're going to get over I know, it quickly. It's tough. I know, but just <laughs> pretend they're, pretend the cameras are not even here, just like you pretend I'm not here. Uh, Bob Brown's back with us. Speaking of real estate, uh, realtor with Coldwell Banker Deanne Harper Realtors, and in a previous life was our uh, boss, was our manager here at KTSA. So we love having him back. Um, he was well. You were a great guy to work for, and you know, I, it, it shows because when you come back in the building now, you get this nice warm it's welcome. Great to be here. Yeah. Love the folks. The hero's yes. greeting when you come back. Yeah, it's Very nice. So Good. I ask you this every time, and you're probably going to give me the same answer, but how's the real estate biz? Well, it's really good. I mean, um, residentially, I think we're slated for 3.5% growth this year. There are parts of town that are 8 to 10. Wow. I mean, it's just it's really, really good. And probably the biggest thing right now is that interest rates are staying low you know a few months ago it was kind of dicey as to where it was going to go do you have people that that call you and say i really don't have any reason to sell my house or move but i'm thinking i don't know should i I? should i be timing the market i just worked with a family we listed their house sold it pretty quickly um they had just kind of been you know kind of thinking about it uh they would have they eventually wanted some acreage you know build up north um Mm -hmm. and they decided this was the time. Yeah. Um, sold quickly, sold for over asking price. Wow. You know, it's it's good. Bob Brown with us on Gang of Four. And over here, Carlos Abelar, who uh, last time we talked was an Andrew Yang supporter. You still Oh, my gosh, him? I forgot about well, him. I, still I like with Andrew Yang? or Andrew Yang, Tulsi Gabbard, you know, whoever. Whoever's at 0%. Whoever, yeah, whoever's at 0%. <laughs> Yeah, I like Tulsi If you Gabbard. have no support, you have Carlos's there support. <laughs> That's the motto. What else have you been up to? Uh, nothing much. Just yeah. uh, hanging out uh, with the family. How are they? How are the girls? Everything's good. Uh, huh? Yeah, I know. Senevio's becoming her own little character, and she's uh, has a sense of humor, and 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 I and I get to communicate with her, and uh, it, it's interesting. All that stuff, the the dad stuff, is kind of it, it's interesting. It's nice. It's it, Carlos is a different kind of dad. He reads Anne Rand to her at night, so it's just a little. <laughs> A little, a little Anne bit. Rand and then some uh, cumbias and corridos later That's the, on. The, the Anne Rand coloring book <laughs> over there. All right, so um, we got the mayor's uh, election, the runoff, and, of course, the council races, too, tomorrow. Uh, but it's been a week of just total ugliness. I mean, this thing has gone into the garbage chute. You can only imagine if we had a couple more weeks between Brockhaus and Nirenberg what would be, where we would be. So what's going to happen tomorrow? That's a good question, Uh that's why I asked. I think uh, <laughs> that's why we're here. I, um, I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to go all the way to like almost like a close vote. Um, the the uh, the the early voting numbers kind of you would say that you you it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a good uh, look for for Brockhouse, but you know how defensive are the voters for Ron going to be to say right. hey we're getting some in, uh, intervening from the from the from the Texas from the with Ken that Ken guy coming in and I don't know it's going to be interesting but uh yeah because they got a wake up call right those Nuremberg uh, voters got a little wake up call with how close it was in the first round yeah yeah so, so I think we don't know if this, this heavier turnout we don't know if this is Nuremberg people coming to his rescue right Kathy or if this is Brockhouse people who are 
well, fired up because now they know they, can, the, the they he, can win this. The heavy early turnout is in the council runoff areas as well. So that contributes to that. Yes. Um, but it certainly those are areas that would favor Brockhouse over Nuremberg. Mm-hmm. What you mean is that the districts that have runoff mm-hmm. council races are districts that might favor him? That, yes. And, Two, four, and, and six? Right. And because those numbers were way higher than a lot of the other numbers. Sure. But I think that had a lot to do with it. Yeah. And um, typically, I think um, more liberal people tend to vote Election Day, and those will be uh, Nuremberg's followers. And so they will probably turn out higher on Saturday than I think they have in the past. I mm-hmm. think there's going to be a heavy turnout. There might actually be a line at the poll, which nobody's seen in forever. <laughs> no kidding. That's a good point. So what do you think is going to happen? What's the, so so you're saying too close to call, Carlos? Too close? I say it's too close to call. I, you know, it's it, there's just no way to tell. What's interesting to me is all this pushback on, you know, the police report or the non-police report and how that may or may not affect people's opinion of Brockhouse. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just hard to tell. So here we are, Bob, right on the eve of an election, and voters have to decide not only between the candidates, but they have to decide whether to believe this one candidate beat his wife. And how we're not equipped to, I mean, this is not something we can, we can know. Well, I mean, and no, we can't know. So Brockhouse comes out and unequivocally, this is just not true. His wife backs him up on mm-hmm. it, right? I mean, the whole thing. I, to me, it made Nuremberg look like he was on the defensive and very unsteady and, you know, in, in, in believing he had the race. You know, the, the voter turnout thing, uh, the closeness of the previous race could also invigorate Brockhouse people. I sort of, uh, to me, Nuremberg came out sounding kind of defensive and and unsure of himself and if i had to if i had to put a bet on it right now i, I think brockhouse has a really good chance mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the good thing is it got people out to vote and that you yeah. know that's what we're always preaching make your voice heard go out and vote and uh just like the presidential race whoever wins wins and we have to respect them as our mayor and, and the, the one thing too is that people came out to vote but it was for kind of um narratives that really probably don't have too much to do with how the municipality stuff works out, right? It was the narrative of the of the Chick-fil-A, and then on the other side, you want to say the narrative of, you know, the, the, the domestic violence issue. But, you know, before all of that, it was a, the bigger the bigger narrative was the firefighters union and, and, their, right. and their deal with right. them. And that kind of went to the background of mm-hmm. these narratives and... You know, it just really shows that people like drama, people like novella style voting. You know, if it's gonna if it's gonna come get you come out, they're gonna come no. vote for that kind no. of stuff. You know, it's that stuff sells. Like you know, no. and the nice thing about novellas is they do have an end. Yeah, there you go. That, that is a good point, though. This this may be, this may may have suddenly gotten to be much more interesting to much many more people, right? Right. People who couldn't wrap their head around, well, I don't know what the fire con- firefighters contracted, but. Uh, I know how I feel about this police report and whether or not it's authentic and whether or not I I believe him. And there are people who think they can look at someone and know, oh, yeah, he did it or, oh, no, he couldn't have done it. And and to the point about the the police report, Kathy, because you were in law enforcement, I mean, this is this has many layers, right? Because not only do you have his denial, but you have people saying that's not even an authentic report. And then the question would be, well, then who made it, and how did you know? How did that all happen? Which well, and, we, and we would a, need to a, know about a that. Great right? argument until the DPS report came out, and then and yeah, but I the DPS even... report is automatically, you know, it said in the Express News article when they go to when they go to respond to the house, they have to generate a DPS. Well, that's report. what I'm saying, though, is that to me that validates the report obviously a report Mm -hmm. was made Mm -hmm. um obviously i mean there's some factors that are inaccurate some factors that are accurate it's hard to know i mean uh and this is at a time when everything was handwritten there it wasn't a uh, i don't think it was computer generated yet it Mm -hmm. might it the way it was back in the 1900s in the old days we had to write it out, right. and, and literally, and we sent reports to uh, Utah to a transcriber who then typed them up and then sent them back. So when we did uh, federal reports, a lot of stuff could transpire between the actual written report mm-hmm. and then the transcription, mm-hmm. and then it comes back. 
And that could be, you know, when they're talking about his identity is not accurate. He, he isn't a blonde, blue eyed, six foot mm-hmm. two gentleman. I mean, it could have been accurate at some point and then got changed. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. Well, we also, oh, well, you you can just say that <clears throat> if if he tried to expunge it and it was to me what I was taking it, I was like. Man, whoever are the people that are supposed to expunge this at the level of when they're supposed to delete it, I guess, they're obviously making copies of it of there's people, you know, and they're not really getting rid of it if they if they somehow they got leaked the original report. Mm-hmm. Like, well, okay, well, that's not cool. You know, you shouldn't be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I do. And I'd also, I, I mean, a lot of and, people have asked, why wouldn't this have come out at the time that he ran for city council, um, which would have been the opportune time, right, if you knew something about him? Would have been the opportune time to say, hey, this guy shouldn't be anywhere near power because he did this. It, the way it has emerged at the tail end of a very, very close race is itself hard to believe. Funny right? how that happens. Yes, years. they seem to pop up just when and, you need them the uh, most. You know, in my opinion, if early on, we, you know, he made, I was at the debate the, that first, well, I, it wasn't a debate so much as a conversation, but when the Revive Report had the, um, meeting between the two candidates, and he threatened to walk. Rockhouse threatened to walk if that was brought up. In my opinion, if he would have just said, say all you want, it's not true, I'm standing by this, this is false information, rather than trying to run from it, is what made me suspicious. Okay. Hold those thoughts. More Gang of Four coming up on a Friday on Facebook Live and 550 and FM 1071 KTSA. KTSA streaming online, powered by Kinetico Quality Water Softeners. It's Sean coming up at 4.05. It's the day before the big election. Who you voting for? Let's talk about it on News Talk 550 KTSA and now on FM 1071. 1024 on 550 KTSA, FM 1071 and KTSA.com. We've been talking about the mayor's race here with Gang of Four. And I think, Bob, you're the only one that made a prediction. You think Brockhouse is going to pull this out tomorrow? I kind of do. I do. Uh, um, we'll see. I, I tend to think so too, and I think if he doesn't, um, it won't be the the police report. I think the thing that would save it for Nirenberg now would be what you were mentioning, Carlos, which is the late influx of these organizations to come in. The Texas Democratic Party and that TOP group or TPO or whatever it is, they they're, they brought in phone banks and block walkers, and uh, they're all over the place. Well, that'll be the difference. But that could be but, the difference for Nirenberg. But it, it does feel weird that that you know this is the way again playing it out on two sides is that the conservative or more right leaning candidate which is Brockhouse is like defending the labor unions when it's always been kind of like the liberal kind of side always so i don't know it, it's just a weird kind of it just well, it's just a little funny yeah i mean you know? i guess he would say he's defending first responders which is not an unusual position for conservatives to take, right? But it's always been kind need... of on the other side, right? Public, yeah. Public employee unions are usually more a thing on the left. I would agree with that. I don't, however, I don't actually think that Brockhouse is "quote unquote" a conservative. I, I think people have made him into one in their heads because they know that Nirenberg and that crowd is far left, progressive. We yeah. want to make this the well, new that's San true, Francisco. He worked for a democratic. Family, so to speak. But if you, so if you, if you oppose that, you're going to think that that whoever is your your you know your alternative is somehow the opposite. I don't right. actually think that's necessarily true. I'm not I'm not telling people who to vote for. But to me, Brockhouse and Nirenberg are not as far apart as a lot of people make them out to be. For example, they both support the Alamo thing. Remember when everybody had blood in their eyes about that? But they're both on the same side on that. So yeah. you know, I don't know. What do you think about that? About the Alamo? Are they no? I mean, are they? Is <laughs> this it. is this true liberal versus conservative? I no, don't. I had never thought. I, I mean, in my mind, he acts Republican, but you are correct. I don't think he is a true Republican, and um, and that just goes back to city politics. Really, should stay as neutral as po- possible, and I think for the most part it does. Um, but I, I had never considered that before, so that's an interesting so thought. Maybe another word instead of neutral. Could we say that that? Running a city should be about pragmatism. It should just be about making things work, fixing potholes, solving problems, right? But that should be government as a whole. But, but I mean, 
particularly at the city level, there shouldn't be any flights of fancy about, you know, these grand vision. We're going to have a 50 year well, vision and a 100 year vision. I just, I read an article this week from uh, the, C- I think it was the Seattle Times. They're having their election this fall. Now, Seattle's a very liberal, progressive city. They have eight Democrats and one socialist on their city council. Hmm. But they did a, they did a profile of three sort of quote unquote typical voters. And the two progressives that they profiled said, yeah, you know what? We've changed our mind on this because we've got homeless tent camps in our neighborhoods. Trash is piling up everywhere. The parks in our neighborhood are not safe for our kids Things to go to. Things are getting done. We, we're still progressive. But we, now we want we want problem solvers. We just want to yeah. elect somebody that will fix things. I think we're going to let it get to that point here, and people are going to realize we need a city council, a mayor, a city manager who's a get it done person. But but you know what? It's going to come well not come down to. But I guess maybe I'm already Monday morning quarterbacking. But if Brockhouse wins, what from what you're what 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 I just heard was that it's kind of that um if whoever's painted left strategically to get the right galvanizers, you have to bring in an issue that's going to make them excited to go right. vote for you. Right. And that starts becoming the new game plan for politics. The, in, I think, in, though, like, the, you, know, the, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 the idea of progressive government is better than the reality of it. The reality of it is it doesn't seem to get things done. Look, all uh, of America's but, major cities have this progressive governance, and most of them are in, are in the worst crisis they've ever been in. Yeah. Uh, so it's not working, you know, and I, I and that's not to say you go completely the other way and you, you know, but it, it's to say you find people who say, look, I'll just make sure in the next two years, or the next four years, your trash gets picked up and your sidewalk gets fixed. And, you know, that people know, are going to want that. Brockhouse, like we're saying that he might not be that much different from mm-hmm. Iran. So but how do you win? Mm-hmm. How do you put yourself in the power of the mayor is to get the get get the side that is considered the right right to, yes. to yes. to back you and and, and he's and been handed a gift that comes up you he's gotta, been handed you a gift on that with the chick-fil-a it. thing the chick-fil-a that. thing made it easy for him to look like a completely the lines different very clearly yes i think you that's exactly to be right that far right to be no. right of nirenberg that's just very true. Yeah, and it, that's we, very we, true. we progressed quite a bit in San Antonio, too. You look at when uh, Castro started the decade of downtown and the, the shift that happened in our downtown that wasn't going to happen if somebody didn't come in and say, this is what we need to focus on. This is what we need to do. This is yeah. how we need to enhance growth. And we had a city manager that knocked it out of the park. I mean, you may disagree with a lot of things she did, but she knew what she was doing. And uh, I applaud them for keeping our downtown from just dying and going out to the suburbs Mm -hmm. and bringing all this energy and the the tech market downtown. It's incredible what's going on down there now. Hold that thought. We have the break here for the news headlines. More Gang of Four coming up. It's on Facebook Live and it's on 550 KTSA and FM 1071. And FM 1071. Guests of the Jack Riccardi Show appear courtesy of the Window World Newsmaker Hotline. KTSA, podcasting where you are. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, KTSA.com. 1039 on KTSA, Jack Riccardi and Gang of Four on a Friday, and we're on Facebook Live right now, 550 KTSA on Facebook. In the gang today, on the gang today, Bob Brown, Carlos Abelar, Kathy Meyer. Um, These uh, numbers on the border are unbelievable. Um, I mean... Everybody in government is panicking because... You're talking about the economic numbers, I'm not talking the... about the, the number of people they're processing and catching. Ah. Um, I mean, the, ex- exponentially more than just a few years ago. So there's no question this is a crisis. We have far more people coming to the border, asking to get in, uh, being uh, you know held while they're processed, um, more coming all the time. Um, so we're past the point where... We are, you know, a while back we were arguing about whether it was a crisis. I think there's no argument now that these numbers are a humanitarian crisis, right? So what do you do about it? Well, it's hard, right? Because it's, um, do we, I don't know. So I always like to set up a playing field, but do we set up a difference that these numbers have a lot to do with people that are, whether they're doing it the right way or the wrong way or for what the right intentions? A lot of them are asylum seekers Mm -hmm. rather than, People that used to come, or that still do, but come looking for work, or you know, like the the I guess I don't know what you want to call it, the old school illegal immigrant or whatever. 
Um, so do then we have a, an asylum or a crisis? At I the think board? so. I think we have an asylum seeking crisis because people have figured out or been trained to say that and declare that. And um, and we've taken so long making up our mind about what to do that the world has kind of beaten us to the punch. So if you come and you say the right thing, now you're in the system, right? And, and Well, and, and it's just the variety. I mean, the numbers of countries that people are coming from. Well, there was a story on KSAT last night about that. all you saw, right? All right, these people the from language. the Congo. Mm-hmm. Was that was it Congo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I heard about now, it. Now, now, I mean, it, it's. It, it's mind-bending that you would go from Congo to Mexico to come into the United States. But, well, that's... but I don't think they all originate in Mexico. I think they all go to South America somewhere. Well, okay, so somehow... but in other words, they are, they are, they are ju- instead of They're you know, funneled my through people Mexico. came from Italy to the United States. Right. They didn't go somewhere else first. Th- this is clearly a funnel, perfect word, of our own making because of our own inaction. Well, and, it, and part of the issue that I, I can't figure out is, one, Mexico is taking the blame for uh, an issue that they're having as well, because these people are coming up from other countries into Mexico, crossing through, trying okay. to get to the so United States. So let's talk States. about that. Is, it, is, is the Trump administration right to say Mexico should be stopping these illegal entries and caravans at their southern border, which is with Guatemala? Are they illegal when they get to Mexico? Well, if people are coming through that, that uh, across that border, you're, in other words, you're saying, are they coming illegally? Well, I mean, are they illegal? Are they illegals in Mexico once they cross it? Yeah, are Mexico, they considered right? okay. not legal? I guess because, I mean, and I don't know the answer to this. Well, let me ask, answer the question with a question. If Mexico knows that they are not coming to be in Mexico, but they are only going to transit Mexico to come here, are we realistic in expecting Mexico to do something about that? Or should Mexico just be sort of shrugging and saying, well, hey, well, I don't, I don't not our problem. I don't think we're realistic in expecting that Mexico will do something about that. Mm-hmm. Because they, they have a high level of corruption. They yeah. have so many other issues other than people passing through their country. Right. Yeah. Their poverty is incredible. You know, people are just trying to, to get a better life. But you're in that, you have that mix of... Bad people migrating with the but, people that genuinely need asylum, and and we become the victims, not, and it's just this vicious circle. But, but what, border agent, uh, I don't know, the last couple of days, you know, they they were asking him about the problem, right? And this guy, this border agent, he said, "What we have is a detention and removal problem." He said, "It's not a it's not a it's not a problem of them sneaking in or crossing the river. It's not a problem a wall's going to fix. It's a detention and removal problem. The the numbers are too great for the resources we right. have, and 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 that's the bottom line. Right. Right. So and and I don't know what you do about that instead of it, it, rather than just increase the number of detention and removal personnel." You know, and try to mm-hmm. deal with it because mm-hmm. it, Mexico's not going to deal so, with it. Because so that's, it, but, the, but that's one of the issues. But another, it's like, so when we saw the, so you know, we're saying asylum seekers. Well, are they also maybe refugees? Are they? Um, when we saw the, the 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 influx from the Middle East into Europe, everybody always just said, kind of like, "Hey, why are they coming in?" Without talking about, well, why were they coming in? I don't really think they want to leave their homeland. I don't think anybody really wants to leave their homeland. And even before, it was always bad. They they they, they always lived in poor, poor countries when they were over there. But something happened that is making them take a long trip this way. And I think, and I don't know, I don't know the answer to that. But we need to find out why they're leaving their homelands to come up this way. Is exactly. it just simply Go, just to? Uh, uh, well, it's poverty. It's corruption. It's violence i mean there's well maybe that we have to look more at that problem than you know as we try to fix the asylum process or whatever we can't we can't begin to fix all the structural deficiencies of all the places from which people are coming one of the figures i'm curious about that i never heard is who's going into canada and you have to think. Barbara Streisand, um, <laughs> Robert Redford. That's helpful, Jack. <laughs> that Midler. Uh, but are, are they having the same kind of 
asylum seekers flooding into Canada and we're just not hearing about it? Is Canada how's Canada? Well, the numbers I'm sure are not. I'm sure the numbers are a fraction of ours. But I do know that Canada has been much more hard line about the rules is the rules. It's. I think we may be the only country that wrings its hands about whether we can even say no. I don't think that's a thing well, in most countries. It's, it's it isn't even a. It's not d- even debatable. But but a wall isn't going to solve that problem. We're back to what Carlos. I understand was saying what you're is, saying, but my point is, we don't. We can't even decide if we are allowed to say no. You can't come in. We don't. We we don't have anything for you here. Um, we we've convinced ourselves that this debate has to be about how many we can take and how many we should take and should we take them all and. Uh, should we abolish the the border patrol? Which again, this would not be a discussion in any other country. Well, it's kind of understandable. I mean, you know, bring us your poor, bring it. You know, I mean, that's 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 the way that's the way we've been. But it wasn't bring them here and we'll feed them and put them in school and medical give them a house and give them a paycheck. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's just different now. Mm-hmm. And and you know, it, it's it, it's expensive. It's critically expensive. Um, and I don't know what you, I don't know what you do about it. I would say this, it's harder to get to Canada than it is to get to the U S <laughs> physically. Mm-hmm. Right. One more place. Yeah. You know, well then what uh, is it? What is it Jack about us that doesn't allow us to just close the border? Is it that, Hey, I, Hey, 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 you're all around the world. What makes you, the, what, what gives you the right to say close your border, but you want to be all the way, all, all, everywhere around the world? Is it something to do with some inner about the country that, well, we are kind of everywhere, so, you know, you, you, we kind of have to leave the door open? I mean, I don't know. I'm asking, you know, like, what, what, what is it about us that we can't just close our borders? I think this is to? an extension of a bigger problem we have, which is that our politicians have confused charity, which is when people help one another voluntarily with government, which is not a charity. And so politicians act as if acts of government equal acts of kindness or charity. It's not charity when I use tax dollars to house somebody. It's charity when I use my dollars to house them or feed them or clothe them or whatever. That's the complication I think we have in a lot of areas, not just with immigrants, but with a lot of things. So so at at a higher level, then, do you then see how politicians use the charity of, of foreign aid yes. to get into those countries Absolutely. That, put the dic- sure. that put the dictator or not the dictators, the bad press. I, I get that, your point. Yeah. People, we, we muddle in other people's affairs in the name of helping, but really to make sure we get an outcome that we want. I, I, I get you. But again, somebody at some point is going to have to say it isn't charity to spend tax dollars doing these, these things that you should do with your own dollars uh, in your own energy, if it's what you so really, like, oh, if it's what consider. you really believe, I got to hold you guys right here because we got to take this break. More gang of four coming up on KTSa. Get us live or on demand. Alexa, play KTSa. Ten fifty-five on KTSa. It's Friday. Gang of four in session. We're taking on the hot topics, big stories of the day and the week. With our gang, and we're also on Facebook Live right now, 550 KTSA Facebook page for that. We, I guess, Carlos, you've got family members uh, tuning in. You, your fan club is... Oh, yeah, yeah, my, my right here. mother-in-law. It's always good to have a good mother-in-law. Good that to is, be on. Uh, yeah. yeah, anything I can do to help you with your mother-in-law, I'm yeah. happy to do. Hey, is the newsroom uh, Facebook Live, too, so Liz is on? No. Oh. I don't think so. That beautiful face. Do you want to be in on this, Liz? No, she's like she's are you kidding me. <laughs> uh, what did you think about? Let me start with you, Kathy. Again, with the law enforcement background you have, what did you think about the charges, criminal charges, against that former Parkland deputy, the the mm. school resource the, officer? The, the only thing that bothered me was the perjury charge. So um, I, I heard Steve Hillbig on with you, and uh, all of that. He said it's a reach. That that's yeah. really a stretch. I, I think it's. Uh, and justfully so, you know, people very, very rattled by the loss of their loved ones. Um, I don't think he used the best judgment, but again, you've got to know what the standards were for that department and what we don't know what he was instructed to do. We don't know, you know. So it's one thing to fire him, which they did. Yes. It's something else to say you've committed a crime. 
by not going into the school. Uh, and it may be an attention-grabbing effort on the part of something bigger than just that to get nationwide attention that this is an issue, we need to deal with this, this doesn't need to happen again. Or too little, too late, because they took a beating for the way they handled this. You know, remember all the stories that came out after the shooting where they had all of these incidents with this kid and right. all of these occasions to intervene and it was being covered up. Well, and, and the thing is, is that wasn't unique. You know, in education, yeah. every educator can tell you those stories. Can tell you who that kid is in those schools. But, but if it's reaching, maybe it's the beginning to start reaching for some type of statutes or something that would be put into law to say that if you're going to be an officer at a school or something like that, they're expecting. It, it's difficult you, you know, to do that because some type of legislation that the does, the know. best uh, training that you get it, it are those simulations in law enforcement, and you go in thinking you know what you're going to do, and so much comes at you so fast that you never do, and that's being trained and being prepared, and you're going into a simulator and you're going to have to react this way, and you still mess it up. So in a live situation, I would never judge a law enforcement officer's judgment in the heat of the moment. We have the uh, governor signing a bill yesterday. This is at KTSA.com if you want to read more. Uh, signing a bill yesterday that will allow more armed uh, teachers in schools. Kathy, good idea, bad idea? Oh, horrible idea. Really? Well, the, <laughs> from my experience, the teachers that ha will want to have the guns first are the ones you really kind of want out of the classroom first anyway. Um, mm. they you know, you've what got there's too yeah. much going on in a classroom to worry about where is my firearm? Is it secure? You know, and maintenance of a firearm is critical. And I know too many people that probably aren't going to, to do that either. And who's to say that the kid doesn't get a hold of the firearm and cause greater harm? Um, I would prefer to leave that to law enforcement professionals. I would think that a lot of teachers would look at the liability side of that and decide not to do that. You would hope. Right? You would hope. I mean, that, um, now, this guy, though, I mean, it seems like to me perhaps that the, um, the expectation of what that job is now, given how many of these shootings are happening and, and, and all the, the expectation of what that job is now has to change. Right. I mean, because part of what you're hired to do now is be the guy that steps in at that moment if it happens. Right. Because it's happening. Yeah. Well, you're going to do it instinctively, whether you're trained or not, whether you're armed or not. Teachers are going to try to save right. the lives of the kids. The question is, can we help them? be better or more effective at doing it. Hold the thought. We'll come back. More Gang of Four coming Jack up. Jack Riccardi, 9 till 1. News Talk 550, KTSA, and FM 1071. 1107 is our KTSA News Time Gang of Four on the radio and on Facebook Live right now as well. Carlos Avalar has the most Facebook fans right now. So oh, Kathy and... I didn't and know there was a contest. Kathy and Bob, to you're going to have people. to get edgier or... Get your fam family and friends, you know, get them out there rooting for you. But you're also getting coaching, I understand. Oh. Your family oh. is telling you, uh, like. Not to turn away from the mic. Oh, yeah. God, they're tough. Yeah, Fix yeah, your yeah, collar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sit up straight. So I'm just going to do the opposite. Right? Gonna there you the go. Opposite. He's going to stir up his collar. There, take that. All right. Um, I, gotta, I, I, I don't want to leave the, the, the armed teachers thing because. Kathy, I, I, I don't think you're right about the idea that the kind of teacher who would avail him or herself of this opportunity. And we, we all agree. I'm it's, not saying the only We time. all agree it's voluntary. We're not going to hand guns out on the first day, like, you know, out of a box at the front door. But it, it, the idea that somehow the teachers who would, you, I think you said there's a kind of teacher who's willing to do this, who you would think would be the last person who should Correct. do it. A elaborate on what you mean by that. Well, uh, and uh, Bob highlighted it just on the liability issue. I mean, somebody that's probably a rational thinker is going to think through the step, steps of having a weapon in the classroom. Just having a weapon in your home, when I used to go and do those talks about um, violence and, and people were concerned, like, how are kids getting these weapons? And we would have this conversation with parents, and they would say, well, what do you mean I have to lock it up all the time? And I would be, you're asking the question about how your kid gets a gun. And those are people that could be educators that would, in a classroom, think, well, I can just put it on this top shelf in this closet. Nobody's 
you know. See, I gotta, I gotta say, the people that are most comfortable with handling guns are also the people that are safest with them. Well, they're, they're not going to leave gonna it be on a shelf. Them on their hip, so when you need it, you got to go get it. It's, it's just it, there's too much going on in the classroom. Education needs to be for learning. And it needs to be a learning okay. environment. That's great until the shooter shows up at the school. And then those teachers who love those kids, well, but the problem, who feel like they are a parent to those kids, are going to be running toward the shooter with, what, a stick of chalk? But you're, they got to have something to defend those kids. We need to resolve kids. the problem before the shooter runs into the school. And well, so, that would be nice, but well, that doesn't always happen. Well, that's where we need to focus what we're doing now instead of the aftermath of the what if. I'm, I'm with you that the, we, this should never be the only solution. Hey, let's have armed teachers. This shouldn't be the only thing we do. We have a bigger problem. We have bigger societal problems. I'm with you about, about uh, more realistic security uh, about getting into the schools. All of that's true. These red flag kids like this kid in Parkland, this shouldn't have been allowed to go on for years and years. I mean, he, he had a string of issues leading up to that shooting. But what I'm saying is when all else fails and the shooter is on the campus, is in the school, we can't have teachers whose only usefulness is their own body against the bullets. That's not good enough. Well, it, but I, I think that's, Fear mongering. I I don't think that. But that really has happened. Yeah, it schools. has happened. But we're getting better at preventing it from happening. Um, and and uh, I can hear people now. You know, in rural areas. Oh, you'll I, hear them. <laughs> <laughs> right after the show, you're going to hear them. <laughs> Luckily, I'm not on Facebook. <laughs> but uh, rural areas, I'm sure there are educators that have weapons that they take to and from the classroom. Because you need to. That's a circumstance in the middle of nowhere where you probably do. So it's not a terrible idea in all cases. I'm not, no, it's not a bad idea. But I think more educators than not would reject the idea of so, because now you have to be certified. You have to go to additional training. You have to do continuing. Ed. But as I understand it, this bill, guys, is to just allow the option to make it more of a, of a choice for school districts. Isn't that good? Don't we want school districts to make this decision? And and if they feel the way Kathy does, then fine, they don't do it. But if they feel like they need this or this is a, a, a this is in keeping with their local standards, then they can do it. Well, we have to do something. I mean, and you would hope that, I mean, if teachers were armed, maybe that's a deterrent to some of these guys. It's like knowing that they're going in and they're not going to be the only one with a gun. Maybe they don't do it. Well, but what are uh, they going to do with the gun? How do you know that they're marksman quality shooters? It, yeah, the, in that moment, I, they don't need to be perfect. They just need to have something that 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 can answer, or something that can maybe be an equalizer. I think it's I a mean, false I sense of security. Okay, but it how is it less secure than no guns at all, and the only gun is in the hands of the bad I guy? Think back to this Parkland deal too. I mean, I think there's got to be a new expectation on people in law enforcement to take that job at the school. You can't be that car, that Parkland guy. Right. You got to be a guy that's taking that job because you're going to be the one that's going to go in there and get it fixed. And you have got to know that there's a different onus on that job now. Well, and the major school districts have police departments, and those are actual police officers, right. Right. and they do do that job. So I know, you know, Northeast, Northside, SAISD, they all have quality people in those positions. Mm -hmm. Is your concern mainly the safety liability concern or is your main thing or objection that it's just not going to help well let's just which of those two is your is your bigger first of all the idea of a shooter coming into a classroom and just starting to shoot where there are situations and circumstances that should prevent that from happening now um but if a if an educator pulls out a weapon and thinks they're shooting at the bad guy and they accidentally hit a kid in the classroom or the person coming in is not the bad guy, it's the good guy coming in looking for the bad guy and you shoot that person, I mean, how do you control the gunfire? Well, I could say the same thing about the, the school resource officer. He could make those well, same but mistakes, trained. too. Well, they're trained. These, these teachers are going to be they're trained. They're not going to be trained to that degree. No, but, I mean, he, he had all that training. He was a Broward County right. Sheriff's and deputy, he, a major, a major metropolitan county, and he he was useless. Right. I'm so, not debating that. So, I mean, you're you're making perfect the enemy of the good. I don't understand what you're, that you keep saying. There's all these ways it might not work, but you're not addressing the fact that sometimes it might work. It well, might save a life. I'm it might not, stop a I'm shooter. I'm not going to dispute if a teacher wants a gun and the law says they can have a gun, they can have a gun. I'm just saying I don't want to teach next door to that teacher. 
Well, you're not teaching anymore, so you don't have well, to. Well, so now everybody can that. rest easy. Problem solved, everybody. <laughs> all right. See, you know, that's how we do it on Gang of Four. We fix all the problems inside of an hour. All right. We got more to talk about with the gang. A few more minutes we're going to spend with them. 11.15, first on a Friday morning on 5.50 and FM 1071 KTSA. What happens next in the world of news happens here. Stay connected with News Talk 550 KTSA and FM 1071. 1121 is our KTSA news time. And on Facebook Live right now, it's Gang of Four with Kathy and Carlos and Bob and Kathy, you're the star of Facebook Live. May I say you're welcome, KTSA. Now you, we know people are listening. Yeah, she's got them all. <laughs> uh, Gilberto says... She and, wouldn't want to teach next to a teacher with a gun. I guess she would rather teach next to a teacher as helpless as she would be. Woo. Oh, burn. <laughs> <laughs> and Mark says, that is not me. a well woman. Not <laughs> rational at all. Ouch. She is well. She's very healthy. No, I, I, I can't finish the show. I'm feeling ill. <laughs> oh, see, she has to go lie down now because she's not well. And um, may I just say, there's a Kathy Meyer out there with a Facebook page. And for all you people that are attacking her, I apologize. <laughs> I have never been on Facebook. Oh, I don't okay. have any Facebook connections. Rant all you want. Get it out but of your system, but don't do it while you're don't driving. Don't bother that, that lady in Ohio or something that just happens to have the same, <laughs> the same name as you. That is, that's rough. I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. No, that is too bad. All right. Um, and Bob, imagine how many Bob Browns there are. Good grief. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm just marveling at the fact that I succeeded in pulling this up in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 he's excited I'm, to be on Facebook. I'm really happy with myself right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. The over there laughing at me. Oh, Thank right. <laughs> um, is it believable to you that there was a Quinnipiac uh, college poll this week that had Biden ahead of Trump in Texas? Is that believable to you? Could that be true now? Could Who, that mean that this is really a is battleground? That? Quinnipiac College is a very well-respected oh, okay. polling organization. They do political and non-political polls. I would say they're one of the best. Wow, they have been right. They have been right about some of the races that the other guys have been wrong about. Were they right about Trump in 2016? Well, you know, I don't remember all the. I don't remember how they came out at the end, but you know, obviously most polls were not. Uh, they were very good, for example, on some of the races in 2018. If that means anything. Well, and I think it depends on when they took the poll because they're at the end of May, beginning of June. Oh, because if it was during the tariff period where everybody stopped. So it was right with... during the tariff period, basically. Here's what I think I think that they could be at that moment because it's a snapshot, right? Right. And a, way that, before the election. It's a snapshot, it's way before election. So right now, people are just kind of tuning in to whoever's saying something that they're interested in right now. Could have been that Joe Biden said something that some people were interested in. Could be that they're particularly interested in him now just because he's in. In and he's Joe Biden, and they know him, and they're thinking, okay, maybe. Because there's a lot of people that think he's got the best shot at beating Trump right now, right? So I think it's possible, but it, is there any validity to it? Probably not. But isn't it inevitable that this is going to be a battleground state? I mean, if you've got thousands well, and thousands of people pouring in from California and Illinois and the Northwest and the East Coast, I mean, they're bringing those political sensibilities and pouring them into the pool of what was a red state, they're going to change that red to purple do, at least, right? Do, do you think that's the biggest factor, or is it that Texas isn't putting up as conservative people as maybe the people that would be very enthusiastic to go vote? Like you brought it up earlier in your show, you know, about the Ted Cruz, about the voter that that maybe doesn't really vote for Ted Cruz because he's not really either they were upset about the Trump or or just really not feeling him uh, because uh, he's not maybe as conservative as you want? I mean, I don't know. I mean, uh, I is think it that, is it a lack of interest or enthusiasm with the Republicans we have? Is that what you're saying? I, well, that would be me. Yeah, so I know that's I, how I you feel. I can only speak right. about me, but, right. and I think there's probably not a lot of people like me that think that. There are not a lot of people So like then you. maybe it is mostly about <laughs> then that uh, they're pouring in. Okay, never mind. You're a I special, think... <laughs> unique guy. We love you. But but I think, I, I and yeah, there's all kinds of factors, but I do think that, I think we're being very unrealistic if we think that we can be this fast growing and that won't have an effect on the political outcome. Well, the just voter look at dynamic our... is changing and it's not just the fast growth, it's who it is. I talked to a couple last in my job I see this. I talked to a couple last week it, because there's a new there's a thing out there that's growing and growing and growing. People no longer have to report somewhere to work. Doesn't matter where they are. 
They can right. work from wherever. And that's a, and it's a huge thing. I talked to a couple last week coming here from San Diego, but they both work from home. They obviously they can live anywhere they wanted, and they were they were literally poking around the country looking at stuff, and they landed on San Antonio, and they were looking at the housing market, what they could get. They were looking at cost of living as opposed to San Diego, obviously, and they're going to move here. Yeah. So that is, I mean, so... Could you straighten Texas. them out politically for us? See, we need you to kind of like. Oh, I'm doing it. Work I, on I, them. I'm doing it. <laughs> but you look I'm at Blanche our, the liberal I, I, out of them. I, I, I should, yeah, I, I, I sent them to Oklahoma. You got to be like a welcome <laughs> wagon. <laughs> but, but literally, I mean, so the assumption of who the Texas voter is mm -hmm. has to change. Mm -hmm. And I believe that that's true. And our state legislature is showing that. So yeah. I went to the Texas Tribune. Round table yesterday, they had at UTSA, and they had four representatives, two Republican, two Democrats, and they were talking about how this legislative session was successful because the Republicans realized if they didn't settle down and reach across the aisle and work with the newly elected Democratic representatives, that nothing was going to get done. And the Republicans are afraid that more and more people are going to vote differently than they have in the past but, but i also will think, heard but i also think that like if there's a messenger for a um that 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 espouses conservative um uh views that is truly that way you can get so what i'm what i'm th what i'm trying to say is that a democrat centrist or a democrat can be convinced of conservative uh uh, uh um uh, ideas in texas so i think that Mm -hmm. If there's ever a candidate that can talk that way and 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 and, and get people from the other side, uh, it'll all it, it'll go that way. Red, but I just don't think that there's really good conservative, real good conservative candidates out there that 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 can appeal to. I think in general, them. just candidates quality is weak. <laughs> I think just across the board, both Your parties. Your man Yang can't handle it. I, 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 I think there's just a lot of there's just a lot of real. <laughs> yeah. Don't you think that part of that is, and, and this is a bigger picture thing, but. Aren't we seeing more and more of the kind of people we'd want to have in politics are also the kind of people that would never go anywhere near oh, I think politics? Increasingly. Look at our mayor's race. I mean, you know, I mean, you, you go in, you're just a guy, you come out, you're a wife beater. Who wants the scrutiny? Uh, Who wants the hassle? Or just being lied about. Or, or be lied about. Yeah, yeah. It, it could be completely untrue. And you never shake it off. Yeah. You're always that guy. If you don't Donald win the election, Trump, you're always that guy. Apparently, Donald Trump's going to leave office and go straight to jail. Apparently so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, who would want to be president? <laughs> well, he won't be impeached first. We, <laughs> we did find, have that. we have found a guy worse than Trump, though, this week. All right, I think even Nancy Pelosi would agree. Have you heard about the ice pirate? Have you heard about the ice pirate? Uh, no. There's a guy who has a plan to steal a 3,000-foot iceberg Tow it across the ocean from Antarctica and melt it down and sell the, the water. And I guess he could sell it at a premium price because he can say it's real iceberg water. Now, that to, that's like a James Bond movie to me, doesn't it? I'm just hearing the James Bond theme and, and so seeing, he's not singing like Daniel Craig parachuting stealer. onto the iceberg. He's announcing he, he, a crime. Uh, well, you, can't, would, you can't hide it. It would be hard to stealthily <laughs> steal yeah. an iceberg. It's hard to hide an iceberg. What's the value of iceberg water? I don't know. And I'm, my question was, who are you stealing it from? Like, who owns icebergs? I didn't even know you could steal them. Aren't they just out there? The... I guess if they're in the water, the territorial water of a country. But I'm not, I didn't know That's that stealing really an iceberg boat. was a thing. I mean, has this guy never heard of iceberg, of ice cube trays? You know, just make some ice. You know, you don't need to steal an ice. I mean, the only ice that I know is the one that's keeping the beers cold, or if, uh, or if the ice that's coming for you, you better run. Carlos, you know? think, how much, <laughs> think how much beer you could keep cold with an iceberg. All right. So th this guy, he's the worst guy of the week, right? I mean, the iceberg pirate's got to be the worst. The worst Maybe guy so. the week. I don't know. That's that's a stretch. <laughs> Wait, let's see what I'm people melting. are saying about Kathy on Facebook. Maybe she, I'm not feeling well. <laughs> Maybe she's... No. Uh -oh. now, now people are asking, which one is Kathy? You know, <laughs> if you're... Uh-oh. If you're having trouble with that, <laughs> I'm sorry. She's the only woman on Gang My of Four. My testosterone Hello. is coming yeah. out. <laughs> I'm not sure who should be more insulted by that, Kathy or the three guys in the no, room. No, no. 
who they think might be Kathy. I'm not sure which is worse I'm there. I'm very complimented. You're all very good-looking young ladies. Yeah, you shouldn't. <laughs> that should be an easy one. That should have been a slam dunk. All right. Hey, thank you very much all for being here. You guys were great. Uh, Kathy, you probably should stay off Facebook now. I'll, uh, have, I'll be wearing the uh, Yankee baseball cap. Keep that <laughs> yeah. policy going. And um, oh, one more note, by the way, if you miss Gang of Four, you can catch it in its entirety as a podcast at KTSA.com later this evening and anytime over the weekend. Or Gang just go of to Four, Facebook and visit with Always me. <laughs> available. We get the news headlines here next, 1130 on 550 and 1071 KTSA.